What's up, base heads? I figure I'd film a quick little how-to video. There's a few of them out there. My buddy Steve Herman has a really good one on his channel. If you just look up on YouTube, Steve Herman, you'll find his video where he describes it and actually draws it out on paper for you. Um, basically, what I'm doing right now is I'm going through every one of my amps and I'm phase lining them. Now, you know you have a phase knob on your amps, or the majority of amps come with a phase knob on them. And the majority of the time, people just leave it turned all the way down to zero degrees, or some people will turn it all the way up to 180 degrees if their subs are inverted. Or, instead of turning it all the way to 180 degrees, you can just flip the wiring on your subs that are inverted, and vice versa. So what I mean by that is, instead of having your positive to positive and negative to negative on your subs that are inverted, you have them positive to negative and negative to positive. So in my case, these subs are reverse polarity. Okay. <clears throat> if you were to play, a, let's say a 20, it don't even matter, let's just say 20 hertz tone, for example, right now, with all six of these amps playing, and you were to hook up a oscope to every individual amp at the same exact time, you would very likely notice that the sine waves are gonna be off ever so slightly. Uh, that because that comes from a couple different reasons. For one, you're running multiple amps, and they're not always exactly spot on like you would hope they would be. It also can be due to your enclosure itself and other issues like that. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm going to phase align these amps using a subwoofer rather than a two-channel or multi-channel oscope. Now you can, like I said, you can use a dual-channel oscope and do it that way, and that way you can actually see the sine wave and line them up when you're adjusting your uh, phase, or you can do it the way that I'm about to show you right now. <clears throat> okay, so for the sake of this example that I'm giving you, we're gonna pretend like number one amp up here is my primary amp. This is the amp that I want all these other amps to base their phasing off of. So what I would do is wire this amp to the sub positive to positive, negative to negative, okay? Now, any amp thereafter, we're gonna wire to the other terminal, and we're gonna do it in reverse polarity. So, this amp is gonna be wired to the same sub on the other terminals, but it's gonna be in reverse polarity. So, positive to the negative terminal, and the negative wire to the positive terminal. Now, it's very important that you do this next step correctly so you don't fuck some shit up, especially when you're running some big amps or if you're using like a little busted ass sub that can't take any power at all. You wanna make sure that you play a low hertz tone. So let's just use 20 hertz again, for example. And you wanna play at a very, very low volume. Like let's say five volume. My, my shit goes up to 35 volume without clipping. But we'll just say five volume on 20 hertz for this example. And you're gonna watch your subwoofer's cone and you'll see it moving. What you wanna do is you wanna adjust the phase on this amp, the second amp, the one that's in reverse polarity. You want to start turning the phase ever so slightly, very slowly, until you see no movement in the cone at all. Even another tip that Steve Herman gave me was place your fingernails on the dust cap because you're going to feel it and you're going to hear it more. Once you feel absolutely no movement whatsoever, at that point you know that those two amps are now phase aligned. Now, could you get even more accurate using a dual channel oscope? Absolutely, but for this example, we don't have an oscope. Once you've got this amp phase aligned with the top amp, at that point, turn off your head unit so you don't have uh, volts going through it. Unhook your uh, terminals from the uh, amp itself, sorry, your power wires from the amp itself, speaker wire, sorry. Unhook them from here, and then hook them into the next amp down the list. And you can do this if you have 10 amps, 20 amps, doesn't matter. But remember, this amp is staying standard mounted, or standard wired, positive to positive, negative to negative. Any amp thereafter, reverse polarity. That's why I said just go ahead, leave your terminals all plugged up here, but every amp that you plug into hereafter is going to be plugged up. Positive to the negative, negative to the positive. And you're going to go down the line, you're going to do the exact same thing that I described on those first two amps on every single amp thereafter. That's how you're going to make sure that all your other amps are exactly in phase alignment with your first amp. Now, if you're like me, I like to get crazy. You're going to like to do things to get every little possible decibel I can out of it. Sorry, this fan's kind of loud. So, like I said, you can use an oscope to do this, or you can do what my buddy Brett from Team Deadly Hertz recommended and purchase a dial indicator. These can be used for multiple things. A lot of mechanics use these. Um, for the sake of what we're doing, you want to use this dial indicator to test for any movement in the cone during the phase testing. 
The way you do it is obviously you would have to sit this up somehow. Ah, catching a cramp. Need to drink some water. Some H2O. High quality H2O. Set your sub up in such a way and adjust the actual uh, dial indicator in such a way that this needle sits on the cone. Uh, you see that? Any movement at all on this needle is going to make that dial indicator move and it's very sensitive. It measures all the way up to thousandths of an inch. So if there is any movement in this cone at all, maybe your fingernail doesn't pick it up, your finger don't pick it up, maybe you can't see it with the naked eye, this is going to tell you if there's any movement whatsoever. I mean, this thing is extremely accurate. That's one way of doing it. This only costs 40 bucks on Amazon. It's just called a dial indicator. So again, these are two methods that you can do if you don't have a dual channel O-scope. <clears throat> just figured I'd make this video for you. Just a how-to real quick. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions. Put them in the comments. Please like, comment, subscribe.